Thank you, Greg. What a hot ticket it is. We got North Carolina and Duke in the same building. The Tar Heels are up first. The number one seed out of the Syracuse bracket about to collide with the Cyclones of Iowa State. And again, the winner moved on to the Sweet 16 and to Syracuse next Friday. Jim Nance, Billy Packer. Hello, friends. And uh, Billy, what about North Carolina and Iowa State? Let's get right to it. How do you break it down? Well, what's going to be interesting here is going to be the style of plays. And for Iowa State, you watch a man who had a career blocks record the other day, seven blocks he had, and he just controlled everything in the paint. Holman was outstanding on both ends of the floor. And Stinson, here you see him going around Vincent Greer, a beautiful reverse dribble. He's got that floater in the lane, extremely powerful guy down inside. What do you see for the Tar Heels? North Carolina has so many weapons, uh, Jim, and we saw what they did get last week uh, with this young man right here. Marvin Williams coming in. He's just a freshman, but he's coming of age for this ball team. Will be heavily used today. And McCants is now back, suffering from that intestinal problem. Now back. He started the other day. Looked extremely positive. Iowa State's coach, Wayne Morgan, second season as the head coach there in Ames, Iowa. His team 19 and 11 on the year. It's an excellent backcourt, plus a lot of strength. In the pivot with Jared Holman, who had quite a game in the first round win against Minnesota. Staple and Clark on the front line. It's Blaylock and Stenson in the back four. Roy Williams, his second season as well, back home in North Carolina. And the Tar Heel lineup back to full strength with Sean May, the anchor, Williams and McCants. Jackie Manuel, Raymond Felton in the backcourt, 28 and 4 in the year, meriting a number one seed in this tournament. Jim Roy Williams obviously came from the Big 12. Holman is about the only person that he coached against on this basketball team. And of course, Coach Morgan was not there as the head coach when Roy Williams was at Kansas. Tip back to Holman and Iowa State with the first look. Blaylock handling. Good matchup inside. Holman and May. Be a lot of banging in there to see who can establish presence first. There's that leaner by Stinson. He normally will take that shot and probably should have there. He was trying to feed Staple and the ball goes out of bounds. First possession, a turnover. Jim, what will be interesting here, Iowa State loves to press. North Carolina kind of likes to be pressed. Be interesting to see how that strategy works out. Now they break it with ease the first time down the floor, but they'll reset. Well, the ball goes to corner to Manuel. Manuel does not want that jumper. That's where they wanted McCants. Example. Underneath. Not enough spin. May, second chance. Holman thought he had the block. They call the foul instead. May goes to the floor. Holman takes no prisoners on the inside. May bounces right up. Good pass inside. Good job by McCants to keep that ball alive. And there are those tremendous hands by May. Now, one of the things that's really different. North Carolina is an extremely deep team at all positions with the exception of Raymond Felton. When you start talking about... Iowa State, you're talking about three of their key players play over 35.5 minutes a game. Holman being one of those, it's tough to keep a guy out there 36 minutes a game to play the likes of May and Williams who will come in for his place. One break, that call did not go against Holman. The foul was on Clark instead. So the center, some may have thought it was going to go against Holman, but the freshman Clark gets whistled for it, and May knocks down the two free throws. North Carolina straight man to man. As usual, Manuel, who's a terrific defender, made all ACC defensive. Stenson picks it up. In and out. Right back to Clark. He has it. He takes it. Gets it. Well, Staple and Clark both going after that ball. I thought they'd defend each other. Nice job by May. Ball was touched, so it's not backcourt. To Wad Williams, open corner. Frenetic pace right now, which is what Iowa State likes to do. Laylock, he's racing. He'll pull back out as Felton shuts off the angle. Staple takes the jumper, and Iowa State hits two straight. They are going to establish a pace, and they've proven that they can play that way from a standpoint of stamina. North Carolina, with a press, would like to have McCants down in the corner for his jump shot. And that's a reach in. Stenson preventing Jawad Williams from going up. Iowa State, their season, uh, really a tale of two seasons. Started slow, 
In fact, 0-5 in, in the Big 12. And right after that, they reel off seven straight wins, including at Texas, at Kansas. This is a team that had lost 28 consecutive road games in conference and then goes and wins at Austin and in Lawrence, the only team to win at Kansas this year. And the only one other time in the Big 12 history has somebody beaten both of those teams on the road, and that was Missouri. This team has won 11 of their last 14 games, being knocked out by a team that's hot right now, Texas Tech, in the Big 12 tournament. Yeah, that was in the semifinals. They lost to Tech. They had beaten Tech during the season once. Two missed free throws by Jawad Williams. Iowa State away from the ball. Staple is looking. Is it an illegal screen, or was it Felton trying to get around? It looks like it's going to be on Felton. It is on Felton. Staple said, wait a minute, you can't call that on me. <laughs> he was pointing toward him. But uh, Iowa State, Billy, when it lost those five opening conference games, they dropped all the way to 161st on the computer, in the RPI. Now they find themselves playing for a berth in the Sweet 16, and Stinson hits the three from the corner. North Carolina tries to go to a trap. Here will be interesting. Felton normally breaks traps and then gets the ball to this man, as he does. Now, one of the things you like against a trapping defense is to have somebody that can post up in the corner and hit jump shots, and that's what McCants can do. McCants with a beautiful form. Quick shot taken at the other end, and Carolina comes out with it. And look for McCants to find a home down in that corner against this defense. Traveling on Jawad Williams. Well, Roy Williams wanted that ball hit ahead to McCants. He's shouting at Felton, and rightfully so. The Tar Heels lost their opener at Santa Clara, playing without Felton. But when he came back, 14 straight wins. They did not lose a game at home this year. 18-0. The last time they were undefeated at home was back in 1993, the last time Carolina won a national championship. And there was the case. Roy Williams saw it right away. If you're Felton, get the ball down to the corner where McCann's going to be wide open. In the home and he can't handle it, but Clark tries to save it, and it did, in fact, touch Carolina last. This kid, Clark, jumping around, freshman from Queens, New York, has had a great month, and uh, confidence gained, it uh, seems, every game now. Jimmy had 14 points, five rebounds the other day four steals. He was five for eight from the floor, and as you said, it seems like every game now he's starting to pick it up. He had 20 points in the opening round of that Big 12 tournament. He is playing much, much better as the season goes on. Kicks that ball, loses it. Felton comes out with it. <laughs> Ahead to McCants. And Roy Williams got his message across. Felton goes right to McCants. Marvin Williams again in the lineup for North Carolina, number 24, the freshman. Here you see the zone drop way back inside the top of the key. Jackie Manuel gives it up. Tipped around by Marvin Williams, but into the arms of Staple. Uh, McCants normally can finish in there, but good shot blocking. Staple doing a good job. Holman, we know, all-time career shot blocker at Iowa State. Benson, tough shot. And Marvin Williams plucks it away. Marvin Williams led this team against Oakland with 20 points, tying his high. Bad place to go, particularly if you're manual. You're not a real good ball handler. You don't want to get caught down underneath the basket. And well defended anyway. Had he tried, well, he tried to get that pass out, it would have been picked off by the Cyclones in any case. Melvin Scott has just come in for North Carolina. Tar Heels behind early as this helter-skelter tempo of Iowa State. The Cyclones have created working to their favor at the start. Jim Scott, now they're going to be trapping out of this. Scott was on Clark. Bad cross-court pass. Right back, Blaylock had it. And Felton ends up with it. Manuel coming down the middle. And he'll head to the line for a pair. Jackie Manuel getting much more aggressive on the offensive end of the floor against Oakland the other day was five or six, 10 points, three rebounds, four assists. A man normally dedicates his game to defense, but of late, he's going to the basket. So Rashawn Clark has two early fouls. Jackie Emanuel, senior, can you remember these guys? First game of their careers, North Carolina against Hampton. They lose at home. Now here they are with a chance to really go deep in the NCAA tournament. It's been quite a four-year experience for this guy. Jack Emanuel will shoot one more. You saw Tashi Carr replace 
Clark in the lineup for Iowa State. These seniors had won only four ACC road games their first three years at Carolina. This year, they won six. Won six and two on the road. 14 and four overall. 14 and two overall in conference to win the regular season. Manuel Stinson. Stinson uh, giving up some size, but uh, has good leaping ability. Good pass. Ball comes right in, gets the assist, the staple. Carolina's missed his last four free throws. Jawad Williams missed two earlier than Jackie Manuel, you saw. What this press has done, because uh, Iowa State does a great job going from full court pressure back to his own defense, and there's Marvin Williams. Steps outside at six foot ten. And hits the three. It was 8 for 11, 20 points, 8 rebounds the other day. Big numbers for the freshman. Coleman. Nifty move, but tough shot. And Stinson almost pulled it away. Felton snaps it down to Scott. Inside, Manuel going back to the line where he just missed two. Well, we get to the first break. One point lead, Cyclones. Stinson and company have the lead. Billy, the ACC already off to a big day with North Carolina State ending UConn's defense of a national championship. Yep, 5 4 6 1. Wake, uh, Wake Forest loss is the only loss for the ACC, a sensational double overtime game last night. Wake Forest scored on 10 of their first 11 possessions. But an incredible comeback by West Virginia, led by Mike Gans. He had 29 points in that game, and anybody who didn't stay up to watch it missed a, a great one. Surround Downey was just sensational, trying to keep his game in it. You know, Jim, in watching the tournament yesterday, there are losers in terms of score of the game, but to watch these kids play, there have not been losers in this NCAA tournament in that regard. And as far as effort is concerned. Vermont and Michigan State coming up for some of you. You said the ACC with only one loss. I thought it was two. What about Boston College? But <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, you know what? Yeah, the way that the Big East has treated them, yep. they may go ahead and put that that way. <laughs> yep, they'll be in the ACC next year. As BC was uh, eliminated by Wisconsin-Milwaukee, moving on to the Sweet 16 in Chicago. And Jim, for Jim Calhoun, he was 27-0 against Team 6 through 16. That's the first time he's ever been beaten, beaten by somebody with a seed six or higher. That staple floating to his left, tough shot, not a good shot. David Noel has come into the Tar Heel lineup, number 34, and here he is. Since Marvin Williams has come into the game, there has been a little different presence on the boards for North Carolina. There he is again. And Holman finally says, give it back. Look at Marvin Williams. Crappy play to May for the basket. Now, with Williams and May, you're going to have to ask a lot of Holman to play against that caliber of player for 35 plus minutes. Carolina's on a 7 0 run. Cross court, car open. Stinson sets it up, Staple. And he'll go to the line. Nice job by Staple, realizing May was coming for the block, hesitated. Staple is a senior from Kingston, Jamaica, and he too, like uh, Clark, who is sitting with two fouls, he has come on of late, had double-digit rebounding games three straight before the Minnesota game on Friday. That foul was on May. That's his first. And this one would have tied it. The press has been somewhat taken off, and there's where McCants wants to be. Laylock. Good hands. And quickness. And ahead to Spencer. He can dictate games. And he likes to go up against a smaller man where he can use that power inside. He's got Scott on him. That was Blaylock set up for the open three. Boy, that was some rebound by Felton. The guy can really get up in the air. Stutter step drive. And off the rim. North Carolina not getting many second chance opportunities in this game. What a pass. Blaylock ahead to Stinson. And the Cyclones regain the lead. One of the things you love to see in a team is great ability to go from offense to defense and vice versa. Iowa State probably does that as well as anybody I've seen this year. Marvin Williams with his second three of the game. How about that? The late fast break and a 6'10 guy pulls up and hits it.
fast-paced game which really plays into North Carolina's hands. They are the number one scoring team in the country. They like the pace of this game. Coleman, that ball, I think, deflected by yeah, May. I think he got fouled. May at the other end. So that foul called on Carr of Iowa State. Jim, one of the things when you have big guys that are going to have to go at this pace, and you can see even Felton, who has had to play both ends here, is bending over right now. This is a game stamina is going to really be at a premium. Holman's got to be tired out there. He's getting big guys running against him every second. This is Quentin Thomas coming in to give Felton a little breather. Thomas is a freshman from Oakland, California. Felton is the only player in the North Carolina team that plays over 30 minutes a game, unlike the three Iowa State starters that very seldom come out. Jawad Williams comes in for May. So you have Williams and Williams, senior and freshman out there right now as the two big men bookending for North Carolina. Noel takes Stinson. He gets the number one defensive assignment. Carr with McCants watching him closely. Dumps it down low. Holman wanting to get into it on this end. Gets it back. Well, what a muscle job that was. Taking it away from Marvin Williams. What was so great on that, Jim, as soon as he came down and hit the floor, his feet were going up again. What a dribble. McCants. What a dribble. To cross over in traffic that close to the basket is extremely difficult. Two pretty good sets of legs there with Stinson and Noel, isn't it? I mean, they're really put together. That's Carr banging home a three. Kansas has got to respect that outside shot. This is a good time to press North Carolina with Felton out of the ball game. Double team right here. Good idea. Double up the freshman. Back door to McCants. All alone. And with the shield by David Noel. David Noel will not get an assist, Jim. But you hit it right on the money. It was a terrific block on his part to open things up for McCants, who didn't realize at first he was even open. Carolina about to bring back Felton and May and Jackie Manuel. So they bring back three of the starters. That foul called on Thomas. Marvin Williams with six points, six rebounds to lead the Eels. Well, North Carolina has gotten a boost from freshman Marvin Williams coming in, hitting a pair of three-point shots to lead the Cyclones 21 to 18. Here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where later today the Duke Blue Devils will go against Mississippi State. Such a rarity, Billy, to see North Carolina and Duke in the NCAA tournament on the same day, same floor. But have never faced each other, so That's right. this is a way to orchestrate them. And unfortunately for the North Carolina and Duke fans, they're not playing each other. They could beat, though, down the road in the national semifinals. That's Stinson of Iowa State putting it up wildly, and the Tar Heels trying to take advantage on the break. Manual at the other end. And this is where I said, once the stamina factor sets in, Holman's going to have a hard time getting all the way back down the floor. North Carolina attacking that press. Playlock, and here they go again. Another quick pass. Scott Williams. Manuel keeps it alive. Williams should have gone with two hands. Stenson will chase this one down. Felton beats him to it. Over the head. Back to Scott. Manuel now. He'll race one down and unable to but, grab it. Jim, there is a difference. North Carolina, of course, some turnovers there. But Stinson never got over half court once this ball got away. They are really wearing down Iowa State at the pace of this game. Felton just had a chance to rest. Big difference when you get tired trying to run this pace of basketball game. Sometimes you don't mind if you want this kind of pace as a coach to go ahead and let guys make it frenetic just to make sure that the pace. You see Stinson bent over down in the far corner. Here's Stinson. Oh, Holman put a body on me that time. Nice double down. And that pass picked off. May lobs it ahead. McCants, good night. 
If, if you're Wayne Morgan right now, you might want to call a timeout. You're very, and he is going to call a timeout. Very seldom do you want to call one for strategy. Most of the time it's strategy. This one, he just needs to rest his team. Iowa State timeout. Carolina with a little 6 nothing run. Jim, there's so many reasons why coaches call timeouts. You know, sometimes it's strategy. Sometimes take a crowd out of the ball game. But that particular timeout, I think, was wisely called because Coach Morgan could see right off the bat his team was just exhausted. Now, they'll get their second wind here, but for that stretch of about two or three minutes, North Carolina really put it on. They got only 20 minutes total out of the bench on Friday. They played the first game Friday at noon here local time against Minnesota. Carr has been in for Clark coming in off the bench. Clark with early foul trouble, a couple. They've got five on the shot clock, working it in the staple, left-handed. And that's going to stay with Iowa State. Now the Kansas tried to go ahead and have Staple going out of bounds, hit it off his chest. It didn't quite work out. Pretty clever play. There's Stinson. He's open. That's the range he likes. Didn't get it to go. Boy, the guy that's really got fresh legs is Jackie Manuel. You notice how he's down the court so quickly? Ran down the court a couple of times and beat everybody down the floor. And the chance telegraph the pass. Good defensive play by Stinson. Now, Holman, right here, had 14 points, 13 rebounds against the Golden Gophers, and he's on the board with that basket. Plus well, seven blocks on Friday. He's got four points now in this one. When you're not exhausted, you've got a little better touch in the low post. Now they go back to the zone defense. You have to figure this pace may hurt McCants a little bit because of those games he missed with that intestinal problem. May way outside. Well done. Banking it home. That 15, 18 foot jumper of his, he's got that range. And that brought Holman out farther than he'd like to be. Good steal. Telegraph pass by yep. Carr. Williams saw it coming all the way. Boy, McCants makes that catch. He used to be you so think he's going on. up with it because he got range like you wouldn't believe. You're going to find out it's tough to deliver inside there. But some play by Felton. So quick. And you notice Holman just not able to be so active against this team. Carolina now has upped it to nine, largest of the game. And obviously they have a crowd here, too. This is a big North Carolina town, Charlotte, North Carolina. Carr, he's already hit one, but not this one. Look at Stinson out battle a couple of players. And a foul call against North Carolina. They've hit seven of their last eight to lead. Along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis, Greg Gumbel in New York. We'll get you right back to the Cyclones and the Tar Heels. A peek into Oklahoma City where Southern Illinois and Oklahoma State are tied. And now the Cowboys have just grabbed the lead. But the watchword for this day may well be high seeds beware. Yeah, exactly. And Joey Graham just picked up his third foul. He's the leading scorer, one of the leading scorers for Oklahoma State. And they really need him out there. Southern Illinois got off to a quick start. Oklahoma State battled back. And this is a very fast-paced game because both teams doing a good job with their pressure defense. Yeah, eight lead changes in this game, Clark. And Southern Illinois standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. They are not going to back down. They are very tough, very physical. And that's my guy, Darren Brooks, with the bucket, taking the lead again. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. We'll keep tabs on that game. In Worcester, 13th seed, Vermont, against Michigan State. And this game is a three-point lead for the Spartans right now. Well, the Spartans definitely have a, an advantage here athletically, but so far Vermont looks pretty sharp. T.J. Sorrentine hit a couple of three-point buckets early in the game, and uh, I don't know, the underdog looks like they're ready for another fight, Clark. Well, they've got to be able to control tempo if they're going to maintain contact with Michigan State. Michigan State does a terrific job running off misses as well as running when the opposition scores. So if Michigan State speeds up the pace, it'll be interesting to see if Vermont can play at a high pace. They don't look for Vermont to be intimidated because that time is passed. The Catamounts and the Spartans will keep track for you. Let's get you back to Charlotte, Iowa State, and North Carolina. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. 
The Cyclones come out of that break with a basket by Blaylock and another, a jumper by Holman to cut this to five. The six and a half to go, first half. You can see this matchup. Zone defense being played by Wayne Morgan's team right now. Very effective in it. Manuel, he'll fire the three. Yeah, and that's what really makes it effective. Over the back goes Williams. What really makes it effective, Jim, is when you throw the skip pass to a man who is not going to look for that shot, and if he takes it, more than likely he's not going to make it. For Manuel this year, he is now 6 for 17 from three. Only has made six threes all year long. So that the defense can go ahead and match up with that and let him have the shot. That foul, the first on Marvin Williams, and only the 15 foul on Carolina. Look at Felton fighting for it. They say Blaylock knocked it out. Blaylock, who's gained 30 pounds and gotten so much stronger, almost was able to push Felton off there. Elvis got back in the game, and he's rifling from the corner. Tipped around to the Cyclones. It's Blaylock. Gets a shield from Holman, who then gets the ball and lays it in. Terrific comeback here, and you can see how much better this team is when they get just a slight rest. Double up on Manuel. They cut it to three. Manuel gets free. And he's able to hang on the rim to prevent injury. And the foul's going to be on Holman. Coming up, Singer at the half. Greg Clark and Seth will get you caught up on all the tournament news. And a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament, plus a singular Naismith update. It's all coming up on Singular at the half. Jim, good call there because you can hang on the rim if there's a danger of injury with a man underneath you, and Holman was under manual at the time. And that free throw breaks the six-point run by the Cyclones. Saw the all-time technical. You see Manuel go in there last night. Coach Beeline of West Virginia got a technical when he had laryngitis and you couldn't speak. The referee must have read his mind on that technical as to what he said. <laughs> I haven't ever seen that call before. I don't like what you were thinking. That's, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Must have been. Good help. Pull up. Blaylock. Had a great look. Reach in, almost taken away by Staple. Boy, Manuel has got an afterburner today. They hit the trailer, but Stinson closes down that alley. Nice fundamental stop by Williams on that play. Scott, he can shoot it. Not this time. Almost got pinned. And a travel call against Manuel. And Manuel felt he was pushed, and he was. But Staple, with that good strength, just moved him out of the way. Rashawn Clark is back in for Iowa State. You see David Noel returning for Carolina. Clark inbounds, and he was hit with two early fouls, so let's see what kind of spring he has. I would expect he's ready to go. Jim, look at Holman over on the bench. He's just grasping for air, trying to get himself back into this ball game. Gets a well-deserved rest and a good shot. That's Carr, and he's going to the line. Chance to cut this to two. Young man grew up on a farm. He knows what it's like to put in some hard work. That's right. He said it made him who he is, getting up early. All that hard work. I'm not afraid of hard work. Foul on Scott of North Carolina. And uh, Tashid Carr, freshman from Philadelphia, can bring the Cyclones within two. He's got six off the bench. Wayne Morgan doing a terrific job, I think, with a much shorter bench. Getting his guys some minutes and some rest here. Scott gets another try. This time he knocks it in from the corner. What you like about a senior there is he wasn't afraid to take the shot. Had 27 starts last year. So he's got a lot of experience. I think he got a lot of confidence, too, when McCants was out. Here's Spencer trying to match it at the other end. And May with those big mitts. You're looking at a team that is not a good three-point shooting team. They were 12th in the Big 12. Marvin Williams. Iowa State only shoots 29% from three-point range. And out of 65 teams in this year's NCAA tournament, that ranks 63rd. Well, they tie it up. Stinson and the arrow. The ball's going to North Carolina. Carolina on a 5-0 run. Milwaukee makes its first ever Sweet 16. Bob Knight going back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1994. Arizona, the only three seed to survive the first weekend. And how about the job by Coach Bob Knight? He's taking his team to Albuquerque, 
And the last time he went to a Final Four, as you see Felton off, Dewan Williams tip. Bad tip. He should have caught that ball with two hands, keeping it alive. Last time Bob Knight went with Indiana, he came out of Albuquerque back in 92. Remember that? Beat Absolutely. UCLA. Blew him out in the final. Stinson, jumper for two. And we are talking about Albuquerque Regional, not Albuquerque Final Four. Sorry. Where another guy from around here did all right. Valveno. And they say again, Stinson touched it last again. We're down to three and a half to go, first half. Carolina's knocked down four threes and leads it by five. Wayne Morgan trying to get his Cyclones to pull off a shocker here and go back to Syracuse, where he was a longtime assistant for 11 years. He and Jim Beheim. All right, Ian Bernie Fine were fixtures there from 84 to 96. He, it, he was uh, obviously involved in the 87 and the 96 Final Four. Terrific recruiter with an Eastern pipeline, and it really has served him well at Iowa State so far. There you see the zone defense again matching up. Look for McCants in the corner. Williams outside can also extend the zone. McCants steps over and unable to get clear up ahead. It's Clark breaking free. And, and McCants did two things wrong there. He took the bad shot, and then the man that was guarding him just released, and McCants went into no man's land and did nothing. Great pass to make up for it. Wow, they got that right past Clark, and Marvin Williams makes the lay in. The three, Carr thought he had it. Marvin Williams pretty sure handed when he goes up for a rebound, and he? he really is. That's Holman. Oh, there's a hold. Yep. That's the sure hands you were talking about. Absolutely. There is the hold. <laughs> Carr had an opportunity to be breaking loose, and they really break well out of that zone, matchup zone. They call that, they call that on McCants. It'll be a one and one for, for Carr. And tonight on CBS, the Jerry Tarkanian story comes to life. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, a spring break shark attack. I heard there was a movie about the sharks, and I thought it was Jerry, okay. Shannon Lucio, Star's world premiere. Spring break shark attack. Billy, look out. Hey, let's throw a kudo to the officials on that play. If you didn't have three officials, there's no way that that foul would have been called. They did a terrific job covering a court. It has to be covered from end to end today. Terrific piece of officiating there. Look at this passing. Oh, hard to win. How about the body control? <laughs> Holman is saying, hey, I'm the career shot block leader. Don't create something like that on me. Worked it back up to seven. And Felton, what a steal. Takes the jumper. That was long. You can see it. There's Williams again, almost getting another rebound. Last two minutes now. Iowa State closed fast against Minnesota in both halves on Friday. Can they do it again? This is McCants. And that's, that's two. Two here late in the going. Jim, mental breakdown there. Not moving his feet for McCants. Why would you foul a Stinson who does not want to take the outside three-point shot? Sean May has just returned to the North Carolina lineup, and McCant sent to the bench with his second foul, as Curtis Stenson will be at the line for Iowa State to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. North Carolina's had a lead as large as nine. That got trimmed right back down to two. Now they've worked it back up again to seven here in the first half. Marvin Williams coming off the bench with another big performance, just like the one he had on Friday against Oakland. He got 12 points and eight rebounds in this half. Iowa State beat an ACC team in Virginia earlier this year. Stinson had his high of 30 points that night, but his big game was that 29-point game in that win against Kansas. They have had a common opponent with Iowa, which North Carolina took care of handily. Iowa State lost to. Good recognition in the matchup zone. Fire the three from the yeah. corner. Noel and Holman the only one underneath. Wayne Morgan to give him that shot all day long. They keep breaking early. Stenson misses the short one. 
Boy, they had some chances inside. I haven't been able to got the numbers now. But Blaylock will let his defense reset as he knocks it out. As we were talking about a little bit earlier, the Syracuse bracket heralded by many, including us, to be one of the toughest brackets we've ever seen. And it's not quite working out the way everybody figured it would. North Carolina, Iowa State winner will advance to Syracuse. Kansas in this bracket has already been knocked out and earlier today UConn eliminated as well. Well Jim I said on selection Sunday there are five teams there that can win a national championship and so far two of those are gone long gone. Well the only team so far officially in that sweet 16 site for Friday is NC State after its win earlier today against Connecticut. Felton steps up he's short. And no one touched it. It'll belong to Iowa State with less than a minute to go. Well, I talked about three-point shooting, and Iowa State was 63rd out of 65 teams in the NCAA tournament. North Carolina ranks seventh at 40% from three. But they're not hitting out there because they're getting the ball. They're two for six so far, and they're getting the ball to the wrong players in the corners. Scott delivered from there, and McCants did as well. But they've got to get those fellows in the corners against this matchup zone. Holman, he's hit one jumper from out here. Not this one. And it's Felton coming down low for the rebound. And he can certainly weave through a lot of traffic. He can, but good transition defense by Iowa State. Good as any team I've seen this year. Getting back on D. Scott, not this time. On the floor, May. Yes. 21 seconds to go. And Carolina back up now to its largest lead, matching its largest lead of nine. Now two or two of seven though from three. Holman. Then it's Carolina ball with 7.5 seconds to go. Plenty of time. Let's see if McCants goes back into the ball game now to get. Yes, he does. So does Rashawn Terry come in for North Carolina. See, you're gonna put shooters on the floor. This is a good move by Roy Williams. Now, no matter how they play that matchup zone, he's got Terry, although he's cold, pretty decent shooter from one wing. McCants from the other, Williams from outside. Surprised they're not pressing right here. Will they go to the locker room with a double-digit advantage? Wow. Oh, wow. Three. Fires a low. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. North Carolina gets the unexpected three. Felton, who's improved so much this year <laughs> from outside, but that was way outside. How about McCants giving it up? Putting it right back in Felton's hand, who was supposed to be the distributor. I guess he knew what he was doing. Absolutely. Well, just when Iowa State had cut the lead to two at 31-29, North Carolina closes it out in the first half with a 14-4 spurt to give them the lead of 12. Raymond Felton. We've reached halftime. North Carolina 45 and Iowa State 33. We've got Greg Clark to set on the road to the Final Four in a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's basketball championship is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Blockbuster, Miller, and by Pontiac. Carolina with a strong first half performance here in Charlotte, leading 45-33. And Billy, let's take a look here at the numbers that stand out in your mind. Well, field goal shooting percentage about the same, but the three-point percentage is something a little bit different. And Iowa State, as we pointed out, would have a hard time coming back if they had to rely on threes, where they have a rough time. Steals. North Carolina had nine. It didn't seem that way. That Iowa State did a terrific job getting back on defense. And there's Holman and. Marvin Williams coming off that bench with a huge first half, 12 points, 10 rebounds, and made it really tough for Holman having to go up against May and Williams not getting a rest. Minutes played is extremely important, too. You had Clark played 18 minutes, Staple 19 minutes, Stinson 19, Blaylock 20, 
and Holman played 19. So not much rest for the weary in that first half for Iowa State. They'll need to use their timeouts wisely. Stinson with a jumper. Cyclones crash the board, but Carolina comes out with it with Felt. As you said, though, in the first half, Iowa State's accustomed to going most of the way with their starters. Three of their players are among the top five in minutes played in the Big 12. And those three are the three key players. Pass lazy. And Holman knocked it away, set up the steal, and last touch by Carolina. Oh, no, they're going to give it back to North Carolina. Well, everybody thought that that was a travel violation by Stinson, but he never touched the ball. So although it was a strange-looking dribble, it was a legal dribble. Laylock going out high to take care of Felton. It's May banging bodies to get some room, and on his back is Staple. You know, Staple was holding his ground. He saw how May lowered that shoulder in there, Jim. Got by with a foul. Carolina, the high-octane heels, will lead the nation in points, point differential, assists. Steals are third. I mean, these are just the rack-up numbers that uh, lead to not only a number one seed, but you would think great possibilities even beyond a regional. A regional in Syracuse that's certainly taking form in a way that no one expected. I think, Billy, the, the Kansas loss the other night to Bucknell, in my mind, I know it was just a 14 over a three, but I think you could build the case. That might have been the biggest upset in the history of the tournament in the modern age since they went to seeding. I know we've had four times a 15 beat a two. Here's Williams. And Iowa State, two players there battling, and Stinson will bring it up. Good blockout situation by Iowa State, and there's that transition. Oh, oh my goodness, he left his feet. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. call on Carolina's Jackie Emanuel. Now, you can be moving, but Stinson loves this shot. See if Manuel ever has defensive position. Oh. You know, I think that the official was right because Stinson had left the floor before Manuel had established a defensive position. Two on Manuel. Benson gets it to go this time. The man from New York figures out a way to get off the playground shot. Breaks over a four-minute stretch without making one, and they force another turnover. No. Benson, got Clark on the wing. He'll oh. take it himself. And May sends it all the way over to McCants. You were saying five feet away. Jim, you were saying he'll take it himself. Push off by Williams, gets by with it. Well, he should have probably given it up. <laughs> Good hustle by May, who wouldn't have been able to do that a year ago. He's just in such great shape. May scores at the other end. Incredible ball handling by Felton. So right back to 48-35 North Carolina. Holman out high. Blaylock, that shot never oh. had a chance. It's Look. May really hustling right now. Yeah, he doesn't care if it's McCants or somebody from Iowa State. Hey, the ball is mine. This young man, McCants, look at that rotation. Oh. Rattles out. It's May again underneath. North Carolina taking control against Iowa State. We'll keep track of that one. Meanwhile, in Oklahoma City, the